Okay, hopefully this will be a short video. Um, so you know I'm super obsessed with Lagrange points, and I did some dumb stuff. Okay, and so I was trying to calculate the location of L1, L2, and I had something like this. Let me show you this graph. So we get to this equation uh, that's really hard to solve, so I instead plot the left-hand side versus the right-hand side, and when those two cross, that means that those two sides are equal, and I want to find that point right there. So but if, if I try to scan over the space that I could be in, I have like really big step sizes. So I could be like right here and then right there. And then so that doesn't give me a really great value for where that intersection point is. One of the reasons, one of the things I try to do is to take uh, this point right here. Uh, once it crosses over, go back over here and start over and do the pro process again with a smaller step size and just kind of do an iterative process so I get closer and closer to there. And I... It seems like that would work, but it was just doing some weird stuff, and so I, I quit. So I have a new method, okay? My new method is this. So look at this. If I Here's the function. This is zoomed in to where uh, approximately they cross. What if I zoom in even more? Uh, so I can do that with uh, this because I'm using a plotly graphing. And you'll notice that the two curves are very linear looking. They're not linear, but they look linear enough such that I know I can find a point right here before they cross and right here and same thing after they cross. So I can use two points on each line and then find the intersection of those lines and that would be my point. So this is the Wikipedia page on line line intersection. I thought it'd be easy, but it's actually not trivial. But this picture right here um, really shows you something that you can't actually see. Okay, right there. Uh, so right there. So if I have x1, y1, x2, y2 down that point for the uh, one of the functions and the same thing for the other functions, I can find out where they cross. You could get a line using the point, the two point formula and you get a line for this, but it's complicated, right? So actually let's just scroll on here to see this is what I'm doing right here. So this gives me my x value, this part right here, which is what I want. That's the r value, where d is this thing down here. So I need to convert everything over. So uh, let's just show you how I'm going to show you how that looks. Let's see. So I, I made a new function, and I'm pretty happy with it. This is for L2. I need to do the same thing for L1 and so forth. But I, I want to play with L2 because I want to build. I want a function that can really reliably get the um, <clears throat> the location of the Grange point, depending on where the stars are. And actually, I changed this. I took out R start. So I, this gives the mass one and mass two of the two stars uh, along with the distance between them. And I have got rid of R start because that depends on where R2 should be. So what I do is I calculate R1, R2. I calculate the velocity. So I get them in a binary stable orbit. Uh, I calculate the angular velocity. And then this is just a uh, to make a new function to calculate the left-hand side and the right-hand side. It's just easier to do as a function. And then I pick a, a step size. I just take that distance divided by 10,000. That should be good enough. Uh, and then I start really close to star R, uh, star 2, the smaller star. And then I just keep doing it until the, the graphs cross. At that point, I now know the two the two R values. I know the part R value before they cross, which is just this R A, which is that thing I just calculated minus the step size. So I go back one step. So then I have uh, R A and R L two are my two X values. And then I can just plug those into uh, R H S function and R L H S function. And then <clears throat> in order to make it look like the Wikipedia page, I just calculated X one, X two, X three. Cause I got, I was getting confused in my mind, which ones are which. And y1, y2, y3, y4, I calculate d, I calculate px, and then that's it. That's it. So that seems to work. Uh, it's still not stable, but if I go over here to my little test ground, so here I have a binary star system. Um, this is a 2 times 10 to the 30th and 1 times 10 to the 29th. So you can see that they're both orbiting, and that's really what I want, right? I want a situation where both the objects are orbiting, and I want to find the Lagrange point. Uh, so I use those. I calculate... Uh, the location of this uh, Lagrange point L2. I plug it in right here. That's my definition function. 
uh, theta doesn't really matter. RT, there I plug it in right there. I got rid of that R start. Uh, and then I put the ball there, give it a mass, give it the velocity to be in a circular orbit, and then I let it run, and let's just see what happens. It does work. And there you go. So they're all, everything's moving. It's not completely stable, but it's fairly stable. It makes at least one complete orbit uh, before. You can see it gets off a little bit. You see that? But that's pretty good. I'm, I'm really impressed uh, that this worked way better, and I'm really impressed that I'm so dumb to not do this before. But now that I have a reliable function for L2, I can start doing things like putting a whole bunch of points there and seeing how they spread out. I can do the same thing for L4 and 5, which are stable points. I can do all those things. So uh, I'll add this to my list of Lagrange point playlist. Uh, I'll give you the code for this. Um, so there you go. I feel dumb again for not having done this earlier, but I just want to, once I figured this out, I wanted to add this in there to make my my playlist as complete as possible. Um, I'm still going to do this. I got some other things to work on, so, but it'll be there. And there you go.